I learned that art is a struggle. It's, it's basically a struggle. It's not like, you know, something that you want to do. It's, it's a struggle, you know, and, um, you know, it's a happy struggle because you want to like really just want, you know, you need space. Artists, we just need space. We don't care. Not me, I personally don't care about anything. I just need space so I can keep going. in Crown Heights had a profound impact on the work of artist Michael Anthony Piguez. He was looking to get his work noticed on a grand scale and turned to Macy's. Belief this summer came into a store, into our store in Harold Square, uh, went into our visual offices and he said he needed to be in our windows. It worked out since Macy's wanted to highlight black creatives and black brilliance at its stores, including the downtown Brooklyn location. Well, it was kind of rough growing up in Brooklyn. I'm, I was born and raised in the ghetto and it was like kind of rough in the 70s and 80s. You know, you had the crack era, you had dollars worth of out, you had a now. lot of... But people doing morning. stuff on Even the, the own, graffiti styles, don't like graffiti way of life. You know, there were trains tags all over the place and everything. And then you had artists, you had musicians, you had different artists combining together. Yeah, there we go. We, we had to survive through the right. urban war drug this fair. There was a lot of drugs hanging out on the streets and people were getting high and hanging out. And there was a lot of club scenes, you know. The club scene was really amazing, you know, the Paradise Garage. <laughs> Studio 54, the China Club, the Palladium, the Sound Factory, the Underground, the Loft. I've been to most, mostly all the old school parties back in the days. It had a lot to do with pop art, not only that, but it had a lot to do with art. Pop art is a way of life. It's something that you cannot describe. It's only something that the artist can describe. You might look interpret it in another way, but it's a very, very form of what we like to use as a uh, three-dimensional or pop art can be something very simple but very powerful. Pop art is something with, um, you know, it goes also with the rock style. Rock star and pop stars basically um, goes together because there's not only rock stars, but there's pop stars. So pop art is like basically like um, taking something and making it and then combining it into another form of life. But it's actually not what you think what it is, but it, it, but it is what it is. Picasso was one of the number one things that children and everybody was like well known to know about. You know, I think everybody was presenting that to me at the time in the 80s, you know, um, Picasso was way, way born before me. But to learn about him was like one of the number one things that really triggered, you know, your mind to like really do art. Andy Warhol was one of the most inspired um, artists for me. Andy Warhol's reticence about himself masks a unique sensibility, one which has helped to alter our vision of the contemporary world. He suppresses his own feelings. This comes naturally to him, but also it imposes a detachment which gives his work an objective, almost surgical clarity. In time, he arrived at the silkscreen technique of making his pictures, a method which completely removes his own hand from the paintings. Looking at him was just like looking at me when the Vanderbilts made me the Black Andy Warhol from Seeds of Society. Oh, John Michel Basquiat was one of my favorites because when I knew about what he was doing, and even though I was doing something different, it was very excited to see um, a young man do this kind of stuff and like not knowing what he was doing and not knowing what I was doing came to a real conclusion to like really push your art even more. You know, it was like really. You know, everything was like in your face back then. You know, you either become an artist or you don't, or you know, you just make up your mind what you're gonna do. My mind was made up to be an artist when I was like in my um, when I was very young, like in and, um, It's amazing how I diverse in a lot of these pieces. I use anything I can get my hands on. I found objects, uh, plastic. I use uh, plexiglass. I use uh, drawing pens. Markers, I use everything, everything that there is uh, to uh, articulate uh, a style.
when I did something for Fashion Fights Cancer, I sold a piece for like almost 48000 And that really made me excited about, you know, I never thought that, you know, um, I was learning a lot about art even when you had to do charity funds for like children fundraise and stuff. And I went and did a big charity fundraise, which was um, held for um, Celebes auction. And I sold a piece for the children, which I donated, which was um, the piece that I did which was $5,000, which went to the um, children's fundraise. Then I did something in Red Hook Initiative. And then I started like wondering, like, wow, I didn't know you had to do this as an artist, but learning about it, it because I thought, like, you know, just doing art, like, you got to get paid for it. But doing the fundraise made me more, like, learning more. I learned more about art, that that's all part of, of the game, you know, uh, fundraise and selling art and giving and expressing, you know, you know, uh, your love that you have for art. At one point I was out on the streets and it was kind of rough for me. And, you know, I was living from basement to basement, street to street, train to train. You know, I lived in a lot of shelters. I lived in different places, you know, basements. There was some of the basements were described really cool. Like, you know, cause I was like really uh, painting in a lot of these basements that I was staying in. And, you know, I would have to get up every day and then close the door without people knowing that I was there. And, you know, it was like a little world down there doing stuff. And, you know, one of my friends that let me stay there, but, you know, it was kind of hard because, you know, it was rough, like, you know, coming in and out. And, you know, most of the basements, were, you know, and down in the streets and stuff like that, I would leave a lot of art behind too, you know, like, because I couldn't take it with me. To keep on painting, keep on doing what you're gonna do, don't stop. Keep striving for your goals. You will reach there. You're going to make it. If you implement your ideals and be selective, you're going to make it. You're going to be on top of everything. When you never give up your art and you always keep going, you're going to make it. You're going to be on top of it. <laughs>